Hey guys, my name is Elena Rivera and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be creating a bioactive vivarium for a Pac-Man frog. I'm super excited to do this. I have been waiting to set up this tank for the longest time and it's finally here. I have all the supplies I need and our little Pac-Man frog is ready for a new home. Now, before we get into the video, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this channel, about what you can expect. Now, if you're interested in anything involving animals like reptiles, amphibians, anything fish related, definitely make sure to subscribe to this channel because I have a lot of exciting ideas and a lot of videos to come in the future. Now, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Okay, so the first step in cutting these cork squares is that you need to fit them. So I'm going to get a full size to show you guys. So I have a full size in right here. And now what I do is I kind of just use my fingernail and make a little dent right there and then scooch it over and do the same on the other side. Now, if you don't have long fingernails like I do, you can use a knife, some scissors, basically anything. This stuff cuts pretty easily. Now, as you can see, I have a notch right there and a notch right there. So now once you have those notches, you can go ahead and cut them straight across. And this is basically what you end up with. So now that you have this square, you can place it inside the tank just to make sure it fits. And if it doesn't, just continue to cut until it fits in there snugly. You can go ahead and cut another piece of cork board the same exact height. So you can go along this and you can kind of use this as a template to cut along a new sheet. And once you have the length, you can go ahead and place both inside the tank and you can turn the tank around and see where you need to cut. And again, make a little mark with your fingernail or scissors or whatever you're going to be using. Now, once you have a mark, you can make it a little bit bigger. And once you have that mark, as you can see, my mark is right here. You can get a ruler. You can go ahead and cut a straight line down your sheet of cork. So I'm gonna go do that real quick and I will be right back. So like I said, the first thing we're going to put in as the substrate is the hydro Now I have a bag that has already been opened, but we're only going to put about an inch and a half in the bottom. So if I need more, I will go ahead and open up another bag. All right, so the reason it is so dusty, it is because it's made of a glass product. Now, it is not sharp, it's not gonna hurt you. It is safe for the animals, and it's gonna do a really good job at letting that water drain into there and taking it out of your terrarium so that the substrate itself doesn't rot or mold. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the screen I showed you earlier right here, and we're gonna kind of fit it to where it has a little bit of lib but we don't need that much and we also have some sections over here so i'm going to scooch this up until i have about half an inch of excess on one side so right about there now is we're going to get the terra flora and it is dry right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it with some Exoterra planting soil, which is basically comes in those super compact bricks and you soak it in water for about 30 minutes and it's this really fine substrate. However, I don't like using it by itself and it's not the best for the plants, so we're gonna go ahead and mix it with some of this and I will show you guys that process using a bucket. Okay, so I have my bucket and this is what I was talking about, the Exoterra stuff. I broke it down about two days ago, so it can, as you can see, it holds moisture really well. It's still moist with the top layer being dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in my five gallon bucket. 
Now this might get a little bit messy, so you want to make sure that if you don't want to get your <laughs> if you don't want to get your floor dirty, I suggest doing it outside, but who cares? And that was just a paper towel I used to kind of stop it from falling out the bottom because I did have holes in there. And I made a mess. So if you don't want to make a mess, do it outside. Lesson of the day. Okay. Now we have our five gallon bucket of this and we're just going to mix that terra floor that I showed you before in with it. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this whole bag in here. And this is safe for all your animals, anything that you wanna keep in this tank, even if it isn't a Pac-Man frog. It's just overall a really good substrate. And the next thing I'm going to do is I have a spray bottle of dechlorinated tap water. And I'm just going to dump it in. I'm not even gonna bother spraying. I'm just gonna dump it in. And we're going to get our hands a little bit dirty. If you don't want dirty hands, then you can go ahead and put on some gloves, but I don't really care. Yeehaw, let's make some cow pies. Huh? We're making dirt patties over here. All right, I have it all mixed up now, as you can tell. The next step we're going to be doing is adding a small amount of sphagnum moss in with this. So I showed you this sphagnum moss earlier. We're not going to add a whole lot, just enough to kind of make sure that this can maintain the most moisture possible. I went ahead and refilled my spray bottle. Of course, we don't even use the nozzle, so it could be a cup or anything of your liking. And how I dechlorinate is I use this Zoomed RepTiSafe. You can get this at any pet store. You can order it on Amazon. And I'm basically just going to be doing five or six drops, which is plenty enough, kind of mixing it around. So what we're going to do is get the bag of biodegradables of the sphagnum moss. Now I have a bag that is already opened and half full. So as you can see, it just looks like this. And what I'm going to be doing is putting in just a little bit. And once I have a little bit in, I only used about half of that, which the bag was already itself half full, so a quarter of a full bag. And we're going to be pouring the water in it. I'm going to go ahead and just do this full bottle right away. And we're going to be doing the same thing, just more mixing. So I'm probably just going to speed this up because you already watched enough mixing for today. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get handfuls of this and distribute it throughout the tank. You want to make sure that your drainage layer and everything is all nice and even. And I'm just going to be putting it. I'm going to use about three inches. You want to make sure that there's plenty of room for your frog to burrow. They do love digging little holes. And you also want to make sure that you have enough depth for your plants to be planted without reaching the drainage layer. So what I'm going to do to ensure that is I'm going to put a little bit extra substrate in the back here, kind of sloping towards the back. And that's just going to allow me to plant the plants more securely because I am going to put the plants all along the back wall. And so once I have that done, I can kind of see the dips where I need to fill in more substrate. And that looks like it's going to be perfect. So what I'm going to be doing is I will show you first with this one. We are just going to take it out of its pot and any excess dirt you have in there, just dump it. I'm gonna dump it in one of my mom's flower beds, which should be perfectly fine. And as you can see, like I said, they can break off 
into multiple different plants. And so what you're gonna do, oh, hi, Mr. Blondie. My, I, my cat's here, he wants to come say hi. Mr. Blondie. Yeah. So I'm gonna use this setting. It's pretty strong. It's a pretty strong setting, but we want to make sure that every single little piece of dirt is off of the plant. And while you're doing this, you can go ahead and pull off any dead leaves or anything you see. But it is crucial that you get all of the soil off of the roots. So I'm gonna show you guys this one and then I'm going to fast forward through the rest of them. Okay, so we now have all of our plants thoroughly rinsed. As you can tell, the roots are literally just kind of scrubbed down to the bare minimum. This is what I was talking about that might have a negative impact on your plants, but as long as you make sure that they are planted in healthy substrate and have really good lighting, they should all bounce back just fine. And of course, there are gonna be a, a couple plants here and there that don't make it. Oh. Some plants have super sensitive root systems and that is just kind of what we're gonna have to figure out and see what does good where and how that works. So you can kind of see. So I'm just going to go ahead and start planting where I want. So I do want this umbrella plant over in this back corner. So I'm just going to go all the way down to the bottom of the substrate as deep as I can go. And since you have multiple kind of little shoots of plants, you can kind of move them around where you want. So it's not just like taking a whole big chunk out of the pot and kind of just plopping it in there. So you can tell that one's a little bit big, but it'll be okay. Kind of just bend those leaves in and that chunk we can take out later on. I'm going to use another one back here in this corner. This is the finished product. I did use pathos kind of here in the back to fill in this corner and also around the sides. I think it'll look really good once it starts climbing. And with these frogs and with any kind of tropical animal, you wanna make sure you spray them off at least twice a day, depending on their humidity requirements and the kind of substrate. So now the substrate that we put together today is really good at holding in and humidity and moisture. So we should be good just spritzing it down about twice a day. And again, I'm going to go with my rag and just clean off the glass. Now, another thing you can do is you can get a mag float, one of those magnetic algae cleaners for fish tanks. You can get a real small one and that also will really help with the humidity, kind of help break down all that condensation on the sides of the tank. And so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to get some of the leaf litter. So I have this bag already opened and I'm just going to put it in the back kind of up where the plants are, where I know the frog is not going to stay per se. He's definitely going to want more booster. And so I'm just gonna tuck it back there. This is a really good biodegradable to again, help all the biological processes. And the last thing we are going to add is the monkey pod. So if I can find it, I don't, why am I like this? Oh, here it is. The monkey pod. So we have this monkey pod and I'm just going to tuck it right back in here. You can tell it's kind of showing and I'm going to kind of bury it half in the dirt, half not. Just like that. 
put some leaf litter around there. And of course, we're going to add in a water dish. So I have this water dish that I got from the pet store. It's by Exoterra. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's not too deep for them to drown in, but to where they have enough water. So we're just going to put this over here in the corner, just like so, where it's easy to access. And that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this tank up right next to this other five gallon tank I have. And we're going to get the lights turned on and so I can show you guys what the final product looks like. To the other five and a half gallon. And it is the moment of truth. We're about to turn the light on and let's see. All right, three, two, one. Wow. Okay, all right. I absolutely love it. I think it's gonna be perfect for my frog until he grows up. And as you can see, I have filled up the water dish and kind of sprayed it down. And everything looks really good. In the future, you can definitely look for your plants to start growing. And once they start growing, you can replace them, trim them back. I think it looks overall super good. And the last thing we have to do is put the little guy in himself. And so we're going to put him in. So I have him here. And there he goes. So I'll definitely make sure to watch him over the next few days. Make sure he's adjusting to everything well and that nothing seems to be the problem. But he looks really good. He's like, what the heck is this? He went from this to this. There you have it, guys. And that is how you set up a bioactive vivarium. enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe down below i have a lot a lot a lot of ideas for future content and i'm so stoked to get this channel going i've been wanting a youtube channel for so long like for so long and i finally built up the courage to start one and i'm just beyond excited um i hope you learned something from this video i hope maybe it inspired you and you want to try out a bioactive vivarium they are such such. They are such fun tanks to have and it makes having pets a whole lot easier when you're not constantly having to clean everything out. Um, I think our little Pac-Man frog likes it and if you have any name suggestions make sure to drop them in the comments. I don't have a name for him yet and it takes me forever to name my pets. I don't know why but it just takes me forever because it has to be like the perfect name. It has to fit them just right. But that does it for this video and share this video, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and I will see you guys next week with another video. Bye.